there is none to misguide him. <clears throat> Whoever Allah leads astray, <clears throat> there is none to guide him. I testify that there is no deity that deserves worship except Allah alone, without any partners. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, <clears throat> his companions, and those who follow their path until the day of judgment. Respected servants of Allah, indeed Allah, indeed bidding farewell to Ramadan is heart wrenching and sorrowful because it separates one from the beloved month and deprives one from enjoying it and basking in its bounties and blessings. Also, there is the uncertainty that this may be one's last Ramadan. And we just welcome Ramadan yesterday and it is about to depart and leave us so shall we bid Ramadan farewell with apathy lethargy looking for it to end desiring to escape from the body and getting, get reading oneself of its restriction? Or shall we be the Ramadan farewell like the man of understanding, those who know Allah and His creation and His signs, those following the path of the pious predecessors and the best of those of this ummah those who combine diligence in carrying out and perfecting deeds with concern afterwards of their acceptance and fear of their rejection they are like those who allah said about them and they who give what they give why their hearts are fearful because they will be returning to their Lord Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about this verse and she said O oh, Messenger of Allah are they those who consume intoxicants and steal? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied her saying, No, O daughter of as siddiq they are those who fast, perform salah, give charity, why they fear that their Lord will not accept it from them. They are those who hasten to do good deeds and they are from the foremost in them. Their hearts are full of fear that their Lord, of their Lord, fearing that their good deeds will be outweighed and that they will run out of good deeds on the day of judgment fearing that they have not fulfilled the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to their knowledge of their Lord and how he deserves of honor and glorification. They are afraid that when they return to their Lord, what they did will not save them from the punishment of Allah. For the believers, for the believer feels Allah's grace upon himself, upon him, 
and feels Allah's favor in every breath and every pulse. Therefore, the believer feels that his level of worship and acts of obedience are insignificant in comparison to the favors of Allah. Imam Hassan Hassan al Basri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, said the believer combines doing good with fear, and the hypocrites combine sinning with feeling secure from the punishment of Allah. May Allah protect us. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that the, that the deeds are graded by how they are concluded. Indeed, the words, the rewards of the deeds are by their conclusion. This hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. For this reason, Sahal ibn Abdullah May Allah have mercy upon him, said, The truthful fear for the bad conclusion in every moment and in every, every movement. The pious predecessors used to strive in performing righteous deeds. And upon performing them, they were full of concern as to whether they will be accepted from them. They used to supplicate to Allah for six months that they would realize the month of Ramadan. Then they will supplicate to Allah for six months that they would accept, He will accept it from them. And it is important to give this matter a proper attention and not to be heedless of it. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said, Be more concerned with your deeds being accepted than you are with the deeds itself. Did you not hear the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Indeed, Allah only accepts from the righteous ones. Those who fear him. And it was narrated from him, radiallahu anhu, that he used to call in the last night of Ramadan, if only I knew that accepted ones that if only I knew the accepted ones so that I could congratulate them and the deprived so I could console them. They are deprived because they did not attain forgiveness in spite of their many means of forgiveness in Ramadan, such as fasting, praying, the compulsory prayer and the nawafil, providing mean meals for the poor, giving out charity, and joining ties of kinship, recitation of Quran, remembrance of Allah, and other matters. Those missing out on being forgiven in Ramadan are truly deprived. One of the greatest ways that a fasting person can beat farewell is to strive relentlessly to worship Allah in the last ten nights of Ramadan so that he can witness Laylatul Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzannahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Verily, we have revealed it in the night of decree. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ What makes you know at night is more than worshipping Allah. It, you, it's equivalent to the one who worshipped Allah for 83 years and some months. So, 
to bid farewell in Ramadan is to strive to witness in this night. Abu Huayla radiallahu anhu said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever performs qiyam, that is whoever stands to pray in the, in the doing Laylatul Qadr, the night of the Kree, with faith and being hopeful of Allah's reward, will have his former sins forgiven. Imam Ibn Rajab al Hambali rahimahullah ta'ala said, Dear servants of Allah, the month of Ramadan is determined to leave. And there are but a few days left of it. Those of you who have done good should complete it in goodness. And whoever has neglected it, then let him end it in goodness. Since actions are according to their endings. So enjoying the few nights and days that are left and bid its farewell by performing good deeds, which can be a witness for you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And see it off by parting with the most pure greetings and salam. Their brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed at the conclusion of the month of Ramadan to pay zakatul fitr or sadaqatul fitr, which is purification and covers deficiencies in the fasting. Ibn Abbas anhu said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enjoined zakat al-fitr as a purification for the fasting person from idle talk and sins. And to feed the poor, whoever pays it before Eid prayer, it is accepted zakat. And whoever pays it after the prayer, it is ordinary charity. And it is an obligation that a person pays for himself and on behalf of the members of his family, of his household, on whom he is responsible for spending. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enjoined zakatul fitr, a sa' that is the measure, the sa' of dates and sha'ir, on a free person, that is someone who is not a slave, and a slave, male and female, the young and old. And he recommended that it should be paid before people go out for aid. And in other narration in Bukhari, and they use it, they used to offer it, that is the companions, used to offer zakatul fitr a day or two days before aid. And beware of observing aid in a manner, in manner, that displeases Allah. The one who turns Eid into a day of disobedience is not being grateful for Allah's favor in realizing Ramadan and succeeding in fasting and performing night prayers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so that you may complete the prescribed period, proclaim the greatness of Allah for guiding you and perhaps you will be grateful i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us success in concluding ramadan in the best
possible fashion and to accept our fasting and night prayers. Allah is indeed all hearing and answering. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu